So yes, Rogue versus what kind of warlock this is? Let's see. I'm not. Oh come on, spectator modes. Oh, this is this is bullshit. I just want to spectate. Come on. At least from what I can see, it's a, it looks like a standard oil rogue. Yeah, I'll just spectate, because the, the Observer mod once again doesn't allow me to spectate both hands for some reason, so apologies for these guys. Uh, we'll try to fix it for the next game. But Okay. So on the bottom we have Ch Chunger as a rogue. Yeah. And it's a handlock. All right. So who has the who has the upper hand in this match? If they think, I feel like it's the handlock because from Jungle, what I already see in his hand is a ooze. We saw it quite often lately in the handlock tag because many handlocks were attacked against um, patrons because it's just the one deck who can beat patrons easily and good and. Playing the ooze in there is really strong because often like patrons wanna turn four death spite into turn five patron and you kinda can stop that really strong turn from them. But here it's again like ooze or weapon destruction is so strong against the rogue. And the rogue and like only the zap or something like that can deal with the uh, big minions the handlock puts out. Alright, alright. Assassin's Blade is interesting and it will get punished by the Zeus. But here's what we talked about there's no way for the rogue to easily deal with those big minions. I mean, there's always Sabbaths. Yeah. Here he can get away with that trade, but if there's the next big minion coming, yeah, because there, there, there will be many. a giant. I mean, we know that for sure. Yeah. And, like the he has a big aim hunter. It's not going to be super useful in this matchup, but uh, you know, in in case we, we end up in a handlock mirror, for example, because Azure Sky also has a warlock. This is extremely, I mean, you know, something that that swings the tempo so well, but. Okay, so so he's chosen sure. to to go for the sludge belcher. I guess he wants to bait out removal or at least, uh, you know, the take eat away the the deadly poison charge. And he basically wants to play the giant into a board that can't instantly deal with it. And he was fine with playing the Belcher just on curve. Okay, oh, so so we get the, the hands now. Okay, that's good, that's good. But, I mean, he, he will clear this pretty cleanly, I guess, just losing the, the Raptor. Yeah. And he also prepares for a giant pretty well. Like the spell damage is what really helps you against giants with rogue. Oh yeah definitely but and he, he cannot really clear this Drake and is there a way for, for Azure Sky to remove it? I mean there's he he can place something and eviscerate maybe like Shredder eviscerate and sacrifice the Drake would be the play. Yeah you have to sacrifice the Drake here at this point but this is only Good option, but yeah, it doesn't feel that good. Like you obviously remove the giant, but it's like yep. almost your whole turn, and you sure, but you want to start pressuring already. But then you have a shredder on the board, and it's incredibly sticky, especially against the away removal of the warlock. And then the next turn, you, you can play Doctor Boom on curve, but then again, so can the warlock. Yeah, I think he goes for that play.
But that way you will always give the warlock time to develop the board. But it just dropped Dr. Boom here, right? That there is no other yeah. option. There is really no other good play, like. But this ooze will be so, so damaging against the Assassin's Blade. I mean, I'm. This is kind of the old school style of, of card, I guess. Like, people used it in the old Miracle Rogues, but not so much in oil, just because things like Harrison Jones have been teched in so, uh, so extensively. Uh, especially at the moment, Harrison is like a big thing, or oozes because of Patron Warriors, but. Yeah, I think he went for the decision to take it in. Just to have more pressure against, like. Also, Patron Warriors, because at some point, if they get a good armor turn or something, like often against Warrior, you run out of damage, and the Assassin's Blade is what really helps you in that case. Yeah, yeah. And I like the duels over Harrison here just because you don't really need extra cards as Warlock. Yeah. What he can do is, uh, but, but you know, duels is cheap, and so you, so you can play stuff like, you know, your other threats. Is it is it a disconnect or...? I don't know, it kind of looks like it. Because you, you didn't see any cards being played, right? The Rob just burned. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. I also didn't see him hover over any cards. Okay, so... Now, the the good manner here approach is just to wait your whole turn before making the move. Now, just, just to give the Chonger and your opponent uh, the option to to restart, to reconnect. So, and from what I can see, Azure Drake is doing that, like he's not playing anything. Uh, I think he's trying to find out what actually happens and see if he's still there. Okay. So this is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, uh, obviously this is not so, something good, you know we want to happen. But unfortunately, there is no there is not a proper reconnect function or a pause function or a you know resume anything like this. So yeah, I mean Chungur will lose this first game uh, to an unfortunate incident unless he reconnects. I'm, you know, I'm trying to message him, but... Really, really, you know, because I, I think it, it... He had, a, you know, a good chance of winning this. Especially, you uh. know, w w with his own Dr. Boom, and there was, like, a heal bot and a lot of taunts uh, in his, uh, you know, in his hand. There was, like, echoing clues for the assassins, but it just comes right into the hands. Uh, that's that's not really winnable after this point, is it? Because it's just look look at this damage. Yeah, but he had like the per he would have had the perfect answers with the yeah. BJH for the boom first and then the ooze. But yeah, disconnects happen. Yeah, unfortunately they do. Unfortunately they do. So we will. Uh, uh, we will wait for the for Chunger to come back. I mean not going to start right away we'll, we'll just give him the uh, you know the op the the time to fully come back and you know, we're just going to monitor that he doesn't enter the his collection and try to change deck so um yeah all will be good like the, usually this is uh, you know j just a straight up serious loss i think in, in our rules but we're just going to give him the the opportunity to come back and you know play and proper series. So Azure Sky says that he doesn't even uh, mind a rematch. So that's that's good. That's good. We may actually start to replay the game. So Maybe we can get a proper series, obviously, you know, Azur Sky being, you know, the, the, the sportsman that he is. So, um, let me just restart.
Hearthstone real quick, just in case. Because it's still laggy from last time. So yeah, we will be bringing you the rematch. So uh, th really huge shoutouts to Azure Sky, who's you know gracious enough to to allow Chunger to actually you know play a proper game. Um, usually, like in big tournaments, we don't see it that often, and it's okay. I mean, it's okay to take a win actually, because this is what the rules say. You're allowed to take it, but you know Azure Sky being the sportsman opponent, uh, we'll bring you another Rogue versus Warlock. And yeah, they're, they're restarting now. Yeah, the game was still in an early stage and not decided at all. So it's just a good sportsman showing from him. Okay, so I think we are in the game already. So we are back to zero zero. I'm gonna jump right into other sky perspective, and again, uh, not the best hands from him, you could say. Uh, especially, you know, seeing Chongra has already found his mountain giant. He has a six swampoos against the assassin's blade, uh, dark bomb to remove any early game traits. It really looks like a better hand for the warlock. Yeah, uh, he has the other game he needs, and such a mountain giant is so hard to deal with for the rogue. And the ooze will be punishing this assassin's play. Yeah, so actually we see that Azure Sky is now having connection problems. Uh, not sure what Alga... Is there like a patch coming today or something? All I know is that my spectator mode is bugging out. I have one card upside down. Like I see the card back in his hand. Okay, so we're just gonna restart it again. I'm terribly sorry guys, but... Yeah, we will... Ho hopefully everything is okay. I'm not sure what's happening, but so sometimes Hearthstone doesn't really play by the rules. Um, uh, sorry, it's taking too long. Fortunately, you know, I mean, hopefully we can start the the actual game soon. Um, if we can't really seem to get a match rolling between the two, uh, we will have to make some admin decision. But let's hope it doesn't get to this. Yeah, so they're trying to relock now. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get get the game going soon. Uh, again, we will continue with this warlock against rogue, <laughs> you know, matchup until we we manage to to make it work. If not, I don't know. Like probably as a yeah, not sure what will happen. Just just hoping that Hearthstone is. A behaves stably. 
I don't see any updates happening in Battle.net, so there's not really any patches or fixes that we know of. Yeah, but but these these things happen, you know, risks of the live broadcast, I guess. So you now it's a bit unfortunate you will have to wait for a few minutes, but we we'll promise you we'll be right back on track and. Uh, yeah, th this is especially bad news for Stas and Tirith who are waiting for this semi-final to, to finish so that they can play their own. Uh, um, Stas already told me that a lot of his games were close, he's feeling super tired. Uh, but then again, he is like such a veteran player that these things should not really affect him, I hope. Tirith, I don't know, like, uh, le let's actually see the, what, what the guys, who the guys beat to reach the semi-finals now. Uh, Tirith went through King of Gun from Vietnam, 3-2 uh, in the quarterfinals, beat Zer from Malaysia, Tak from Thailand, Next Gen, now Next Gen we do know, we've cast him a few times against Vietnam and in the first round he beat Heaven from Malaysia. So, you know, out of out of all, I think Next Gen is the, is the biggest name um, who GCT, GCT beat on, on his way to the, the semifinals. Uh, for stars, he beat Akisara actually, the reigning Ghost Cup 2014 champion. Uh, then also wins against Kazano from Thailand, Jaces from Singapore, and uh, no return at from Vietnam. Again, don't know these players, but I do know Akisara, he is a formidable opponent. So I think that the guys are in the game already. Let's Let's see. If this time things go well, please, please do go well. Okay, so far so good, I think. It would be extremely funny and almost sad that our spectating causes them problems, because yeah, the, the game, the game crashed, you know, in the last two games when we when we got into spectating the players. So if that's the case, we'll just you know only offer one one viewpoint. But at least for Chungar, things seems to be going okay. Let's see if Azur Sky is. Uh, Okay. Well, so far so Seems good. Like, yeah, for now ever. And they're impatient. They're quick to to play their games. Uh, you know, we, we <laughs> see yeah. immediate. I mean, that there's nothing really much to wonder about as a warlock in, during your first turns. But oh man, sap will come now for the. I mean, the mountain giant will come and it, it will immediately sap. I think. Yeah. The question is if you go for the drake first. Oh, yeah. Or. I think, yeah, he goes for the Drake. Just because it contests the Shredder anyways, you don't want to trade your Giant into the Shredder. But with your Drake, you're fine doing that. Yeah, Just to get pressure off the board. Like, uh, tall Drakes, uh, you know, can easily be silenced and killed by the, the hero power, but all rogues don't really run silences nowadays. I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen, like, a owl or something that... Because the, the the deck lists are usually pretty uh, pretty tight, but we'll see that. You know, the, that's this like a deja vu. Exactly what we had the Drake killed last time. Well, he gets met scientist now. That's not really going to help him, but uh, back to back Chunger turn. Like he he has several options here. He can play Sludge Belcher or uh, you know his Giants Drakes. I don't think you drop Low Tape here because you want to keep him for. Uh, to lock the all rogues burst. Uh. So, really, you have to consider. Okay, do do I want a giant? But the giant can be, you know, again immediately killed. So he goes for I a wall tip. I don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this because it will be easily counter, and it's not really blocking that much stuff. Uh, he could have went for a tap into giant, which is like D turn five play after you play a turn four drake. And yeah, it's, I guess he wants to get loaf about. He wants to play his giant into a safer board. Yeah, but, uh, 
I mean, the, the only thing you're locking for the rock on turn 5 is the prep sprint combo, right? Uh, and here we see a big emperor. Okay, now, yeah, this is big. It's called. So he gets a re cost reduction on 8 cards. So Taurus has already paid his value in gold, or rather, mana cost reduction. You don't really want to sub this. I think you're safe with zapping because that's such a tempo play for you and you can think so? pressure with potentially a big bang cleave. Well, you could at least try to go all in, that's like... But the other way around you could just backstab, run your SI7 in and dagger up. He's going to, is he going to prep sub Van Cleave then? Yeah. Okay, just to get the better and bigger Van Cleave out. And pressure maybe lethal next turn. It's going to to be six uh, six six so outside the big game hundred range, and outside, yeah. you know, shadow flame range, especially if you don't have anything on the board. So, like stepping emperor is such a huge tempo play. Like it works just like stepping Sylvanas or a high main. Yeah, because you know the Taurusin usually takes your entire turn, so when you reset it. Sure, he he gave a discount to a lot of the treads, but yeah. and he he has another sub. So I think this yeah. is, this is the major uh, decision that you know that drove the sub. Because if you only have one sub, I don't I don't think you do it. I, I think you just make the the trading play. But with ten cards in hand and the emperor discount, he can play the giant, the drake, and taunt them up. Yeah, which is kinda huge. But he goes for the Shadow Flame, so a bit of the safer play. Yeah. Going for the long game this way. But but Shadow Flame is gone and he has no more uh, AoE removing his hand and Doctor Boom will come right after. So now he's he's wondering oh, do, I, do I play big and I think you do because what else are you going to snipe except the Doctor Boom? So if he plays it now th this will spell Doom. So I think it you just you just F Oh God. But I feel like he doesn't need to do it. Like he already he didn't see any backstabs or something and Yeah, but there is a backstab, so yeah. I don't know, I like everybody plays Doctor Boom, so like what is the Fortu doing against the rogue? Not nothing really. I mean the fact that you didn't see any removal only speaks more that he probably has them. At least the backstab, so you know, I think it's a it's a huge risk. It that doesn't really help your game that much. I mean, it's just I two damage. Uh, you're damage. not in you're not in hurry to get ahead or something and it's like not the late game that you need the tempo BGH and like playing the BGH as a tempo play here just gets back on him because well, there's no BGH to kill the Doctor Boom now. Yep. Exactly. And then so and now we can see that there's no really, you know, comfortable way to remove him. How far Dark Bomb only does yeah. six, so that's one off. So he has to play defensively, I guess. Uh, you know, with st stuff like Belcher and uh, Azure Drake, but there's not really enough to stone everything up. Like another option, maybe Taurusen plus Sun Fury, but I don't think that's the play. Like Belcher is only way that he feels safe, but we know that there's potentially the zap. I'm not sure if he will go for it, but... Well, if... If you, if you zap, you can deal 10 to the face, so leave it at 5. So at this point, even though you're leaving in, in, putting him in giant's rage, the dark bombs, I mean the, the boom bots themselves are a threat, because anything that goes to your face is lethal. Also, uh, stuff like you know, Blade Flurry is also, you know, potentially lethal. But the thing is, you don't have any other burn or direct damage, so... And your only card draw is the suicide, potentially the Thalnos. Yeah, true. So and if the bombs go well, uh, go bad, and he has a good answer to the Dr. Boom, and he can just replay the Belcher, it's kind of a rough spot for him, because he's running out of steam to get those last few five damage, and then... You also know there's always a big potential of healing from yeah. uh, Warlock on the hand up here. But, but I think he'll go for it and he'll just drop the, the Shredder as well. 
He might go for the trade, which is like the defensive player, which can get him still ahead. Yeah. I, I think he I think he mistraded though. Like it should have been first the Doctor of Boom and then the Bomb Bomb, right? Yeah, to not overkill it. Yep. Well, now he can. I think you just Hellfire here. Uh, yeah, maybe Dark Bomb first. Yeah, depending on how you feel. I mean, it doesn't it really matter. Difference? I don't think it will make a difference. So he's really close to dying, but... Okay. Yeah, you definitely need to defend it. And, you know, he knows the two subs are gone now, so there's no way through this Belcher. And the Tinker serves as well. A bit too late, but... Um, the prep doesn't do anything in such a hand, and... It's like drawing a blank in a way. So... I think not that good of a spot. Question is, do you suicide your loot holder just to get the other draw? I think he'll he'll oil. I don't. I'm not sure if I agree with this, but at least he'll he'll deal with the Belcher. Oh, oh, that's a yeah. draw. That's a draw when you need it. Going for the draw paid off here, and also the. Oh God! So that's one mana. Of one lethal. mana of lethal, yes. I think you. I think you just hit it out. I think I mean you you kill the slime with, with the dagger and do nothing. You don't really go backstab into into the face. Oh, he will. Oh, yeah. God. I guess it's the correct play because if if he plays a taunt, he has only six direct damage and. Th there's no heal though. There's no heal in Chunger's can so. If he's a race, he has the Jerexus. Oh, there's Jer oh right right oh god. And also the Molten Giant draw before that was. Oh, this is yeah. Oh god, right. I'm not right. sure, but I'm not sure if I like the ooze here. Like, what does it do? I would maybe rather develop the six six infernal to have the safe lethal next turn. Like at the moment, he has six plus eight. Okay, he has the dark bomb in hand anyways, which secures him lethal. Well, he well he, well, he doesn't know that there is like an assassin blade, right? So he thinks that the dagger is only the, the only real yeah. threat. So why, why are you saving the? Uh, the echoing goes. I think you just just remove itself. So now this has become, you know, really problematic game for the rook. He came really close, but you know, Handlock is a deck that swings a lot. Like you burst yeah. it down. If you don't kill him, suddenly there are giants, there, are, uh, you know, Lord Jiraxes, whatever, what have you. Like lots of heal, lots of big empty. I mean, uh, big cheap minions that can ruin your day. And you know. Now there's like infernals coming and there will be toning up. He can actually do both, like he can heal and Sultura Protector uh, both his fat minions. And I think this is game now, like there's no way yeah. for the rock to deal 15 damage. What need this? Yeah, like sprints and some poison play to get a big flurry, but that's like impossible at this point. So there's no way yeah. the rogue can catch up this, and I guess that's game for Chunga. Absolutely, absolutely. So he will go up 1 0. Uh, the warlock will be down for him, down to warrior and hunter. What do you, what do you choose as, as Chunga? Like, you know, assuming that, war, that the warrior is patron, I guess, because, you know, statistics shows that it's more most likely to be patron and the hunter. I guess the, uh, the trend is either hybrid or face hunter nowadays. Like, I think he can go for the warrior first because actually there's not big of a difference in both against his opponent's lineup. Like, if it's patron warrior, as this guy has no direct counter to it, so like playing a different deck here first is the decision of giving your opponent a win with a special deck like just to get it out of the way for him but I feel in this position it doesn't really do a big of difference here well, but we'll see soon enough what, uh, what both players choose uh, most, of the, most of the players in conquest format uh, that I've seen in tournaments usually stick to their own uh, to the decks they just lost so yeah. you know if 
if other sky keeps stroke, I guess. I mean, yeah, it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> Yeah, if it's like, a like if it's mid-range mid hunter. Yeah, if it, if, yeah that's, that's like the thing. If it is a mid-range hunter and a control warrior, yeah. and he knows his opponent plays rogue, then it's like obviously the warrior he goes for. Because like the mid-range hunter is okay. weak against the rogue and the warrior is so good, but yeah. So we still don't know what, uh, what deck this is from Chunger because these are cards that actually are seen in every hunter deck, but other sky at least seems like it he's playing controller with Sylvanas. There we don't really see her in Patron Warriors, do we? No, Sylvanas is yeah, and and the, also the big the, hunter we saw. Yeah, and the Serene Shield will kinda confirm it, so the, the, it is a classic controller and I've seen him the, the deck has been coming back in style. Even even though most players do prefer Patron nowadays because it just destroys I think both hybrid hunters and face colors, you know, a bit more difficult yeah. uh, against the hybrid because Savannah High Mace are still a problem. But you know, face hunter, you absolutely destroyed oil rogue, freeze mage, all these popular classes that the controller has fantastic matchups against them. Yeah. So does he go for the almost here? I think you do. I think you do. Because what what else is Jungler going to do? Like he's not going to trade into the armor smith. Like, there's no clear way to kill it, unless you hit, hit up like, something like Hunter's Mark, or, you know, if a juggle hits. But the thing is, it also does nothing yet for him. Like, he doesn't have a way to get his armor smith to go trade into the juggler. Yeah, yeah. Like, if he had a world in the fact, it would be better, because... Yeah. Yeah. Let's see where it is. Oh god, so th this is a perfect... Perfect juggle from Chang'er here. And the Dust White will be strong next turn. Oh, Getting yes. the weapons early is so important for all warrior lists. So, yeah. Not going for the shield block here. No, I don't think you need to because it will be eaten up by the, by the two minions. And you kind of need it in a combination with Shield Slam against the high mains. Yeah. So I think you can afford to have less health now uh, for a potential for you know a high main. But we know it, we know it's not going to be. We still actually don't know what, what kind of under this is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it without the leopard gnome, it would have been quite sure that it's a mid-range heavier hunter. But we also see the explosive trap. Okay, wow, this is this is incredibly good. Do you maybe go for the brawl early here? Yeah, I was I was just going to ask this, like, because you're already on half health, so I think you brawl and hit face. Uh, what else depending are you? on what survives. Yeah, yeah. Do you know which... Like, do you see in the brawl... No, uh, yeah. lock thing on the left side which of the haunted creepers survived but because because the left one like the one played before the death spite could be cleared off with the attack mm -hmm. and the other one doesn't like do you see it after the brawl i don't know i don't but i think it just brawl here like the the other option would be to to dead spite and then play sledge belcher uh. And I think this is what he's going to do, but he'll, he'll do so much damage to the face. Yeah, the thing is, do you get a much better brawl off against a faster hunter deck? Yeah. Like, not in many cases. And, like, okay. keeping the shield block early is also so important because, in general, like, he's on 11 HP now, which means the shield block gives him almost 50% more. Like, yeah. and at 30, it didn't matter at all. Okay. And he's continuing to lose life, and he has to play the shield block now. Yeah. And the problem, you know, th th this is why I, I, I like brawling here, because you live in beasts. I mean, beasts are kill command activators, Be beasts are, you know, they, they're what makes the hunter good. Right, so... Like, imagine yeah. if he had two kill commands, like, he would be dead over two turns. Uh, he he just stable. went for checking the freezing trap with his belcher. 
Yeah. And we know so we know it's explosive trap, so. Yeah. Do you rule the spider just to deactivate the beast like? Yeah, but then gives him one more damage but no kill command. Yeah, question. yeah, I think I think you have to. Or may maybe not even cruel task master, but execute even. Uh, the thing is, you want to armor up almost every turn by now because, as I said earlier, yeah. the percentage of your HP the armor up gives yeah. you at this point is so much more relevant than earlier. Uh, I don't like this. Like, you don't need really, you don't really need cars. I would actually execute it in armored up. I think just just to be extremely, extremely safe. Okay, so thank God it's not Huffer then. <laughs> The you might thing. even unleash here just to get the extra mm -hmm. damage out because they are else dead cards in your hand and you don't get anything off of them. And like Control Warrior will never have more than two minions on the board usually, yeah. so you shouldn't be saving it. It's actually three damage better in this case than the hero power. Like I think he's he's just considering between unleash and kill command, but he will go with the unleash. So down to ten, and no easy way to remove the whole board other than a brawl. But I feel like it's late now for brawling. Yeah, this this is why you brawl when there are you know more minions for your opponent and you know al almost none for you. So and I really would have liked to see the, the earlier brawl. He he could have cleared the board so much more easy. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah, but the thing is, he has no real effects to activate it, and no, not a lot of other minions to go with it, so... Uh, I, I guess he will execute and use the Cruel as well then this turn, on one of the dogs. Yep. And he can also still armor up. So he starts stabilizing slowly. So 13 damage, what can what can Chang'er do to deal 13 damage? Now Eagle Hope Ball is a start, and I actually think you execute, uh, uh, you, you kill command right away. You don't really know if you're going to get another beast. I don't know, like, uh, he, oh he, he runs double brawl. Now is he that scared of, I guess, like patrons or... Yeah, know? brawl can be really strong against yeah. patrons. I mean, it's, it's strong against all the other minion based class like Mech Shaman, which you know cause problems to to control wire as well as uh, Mech Mage. It's yeah. basically also strong against like in this the whole meta at the moment is like almost only about the patrons and like it's good against handlock. Yeah. And patrons, which is always a good call. The thing it kind of lacks against. Face hunters, but that's the only problem about it. If you could build a deck good against patrons, handlocks, and face hunters, it would be perfect in this meta. Yeah, but I think is more than fine here. Actually, the the trap will give him a lot of health. <laughs> like if, if he puts yeah. another meal, like if he puts his arrow on the board, this will be five health back. And at this point, I'm, I don't know if the, the hunter can win it. You know, 12 health is nothing. So now you can really burst down, and there's there'll be more uh, armor coming up. So uh, this is this is why everybody's playing control hunter against uh, control warrior against face hunter. It, it just wins. Like you, you manage to stabilize, sure you you stabilize at five or you know even less HP, but you know the end result is important that you win against the opponent. Yeah, the hunter runs out of good things here, and like he also had a kind of unfortunate hand hand with the double unleash in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly, yeah. He only got one leopard gnome as a as an early game minion. He got uh -huh. double haunted creeper, which are you know usually great, but you actually want more punching power against the warrior to uh -huh. eat into his uh, armor. So haunted creepers are sticky, but 
Yeah. The Haunted Creepers are rather important in the aggro matchups yeah. because they get good trades up for you, so not that good in those control against those control decks. So this this will be a one one for sure. I don't think there's anything the jungler can draw. Yeah, second kill command. Yeah, ten thir it's thirteen fifth Why it's it's game, it's, it's game. Lethal. It's game. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's the only out he had like uh, as, Ra shot, as, as Ray as Ray likes to say, the exact that. card he needed. Yeah. It's exactly the oh, this is brutal. Other sky is like, come on, come on. Could could have he had an, another extra armor? I don't think so, right? Uh, he played the Savannas before he attacked into the freezing uh, into the explosive trap, so that was already the first step to get more armor. So. So I don't recall it correctly if there was a better way to get more armor back. So this oh yeah, that's a 2 0 now. It's 2 0 and it's Warrior against Druid. Uh, so it's going to be Patron Warrior against Druid. And how do you file this matchup? Because we, we, we've seen him a couple of times, not too, too often. But I always feel like. Uh, you know, Druid can make good stuff against Patron Warrior. Yeah, but the Druid also has no good way of dealing with that yeah. big Patron ball. Like, the Wrath is really important, it's, and at some points they're like... Uh, he, you can Wrath and keep her or something like that, but if you keep her a Patron, in the next turn he will just most likely produce two more Patrons. Like. Yeah. The Druid is not the worst matchup against Patrons, but it's still not what you could call a counter to that. Yeah. This, I think the, what it, how the matchup usually goes is the Patron just fills up the board and goes for it because you cannot really trade into the Druid's minions. They all have, you know, a high attack points. You know, it starts from Sludge Belcher up and Sludge Belcher already trades favorably against uh, the Patron Warrior. But yeah, good yeah. good start from Chungar here. He goes for the inner rage draw here, which is just okay. Yeah. I think actually, uh, as a druid, you waste uh, you you put down your swipe as soon as you can, like even even to remove a single um, armor smith because you don't really you're not going to use it later in the game when there are patrons on the board. Yeah. Yeah, yeah here you. Not that good of a patron warrior hand. At this point, you want your death spite and your patron. Like the turn four death spite attack phase into turn five patron in a rage death spite is like the dream you can get up. Yeah, but it's. And it wins you the game from that point already, but yes. Like the execute doesn't do a lot here. The war axe can be useful, as we know the shredder is coming up. But in general, doesn't do a lot. Grom is only for the late game, and you can't really activate a good battle rage draw unless you want to waste your inner rage. So it's not that good of a hand for the patron here. Okay, but yeah, I mean, at least the this shredder we will clear it pretty yeah. easily. And there's Taurus on next turn, so and. At the same time, there's no need, not an easy way for the druid to remove it. Like it usually there isn't unless you silence it. But even if you do, there it's still five five on the board. So, okay, uh, you know, getting a cruel taskmaster here, absolute garbage. Yeah, I think you just trade cruel into cruel and go for face. Uh -huh. I don't know what he's covering. Like, is he considering in raging something like immediately drawing a card from the Accolade of Pain? Because that wouldn't be optimal, I think. I think just just going for the face is good for now, and you can always in rage later. Yeah, you are in a pressure position, and you don't need to get the inner rage draw. Yeah. Yeah, the trick is hoarding a lot of cards and. 
What is he got? Oh, he, he's just going to drop Thorison, which is, you know, the D move to make. Yeah, it still he, doesn't give him back the board pressure with the Thorison. No, it doesn't, but I think he can... Uh, he'll, he'll be able to get a good turn 6 and turn 7. On turn 6 he can play either Belcher or Juit of the Call Couple with a Shade. So, and, you know, if the shades grow big, they will be able to clear with, you know, whatever the, the warrior puts on the board. But, you know, he still has to worry what the warrior can do to him now. And he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, so he goes for the draw. First oh. now of the inner rage. And he got the patron by now, but no real activator. And I think that's a tourism turn from his hand, uh, from his perspective. Yeah, because then. he has everything. He has at least one part of the combo, like the patron and the Watson commander in there. And it forces the druid to deal with the Taurison instead of having a power turn. So the time for this this turn six from Azure Sky, like he has to find a way to to stay alive. He has to swipe, swipe hero power here, you can't leave the Torsen alive. Yeah. I mean, you can even... Yeah, I guess that's the only play. Oh god. This is like, do you remember that when Hearthstone was young, people considered swipe to be the best AoE removal in the game, and now people consider it to be one of the worst removals. Probably the worst one. Uh in terms of damage, just because how the meta changed, uh, you cannot really clear stuff like, uh, you know, the mech mages, minions, mech shaman, you cannot kill patrons, even zoo is, you know, hard to deal with, so, swipe has, has gone a lot worse, I mean, it, it's still fantastic against stuff like face hunter, but nothing outside this. He has the potential to just go all in, because he has the death spite in his hand with the execute, and the patron yeah. was on commander. Plus frauding combo, I think which is like all you need to win. I think this is, you know, game immediately. Like, yeah, he has to, he has to maybe get the uh, the armor smith here, you know, by trading Torison into Sylvanas, or rather the other way around, and then but just you play. Can, you can only play one taunt. Yeah, you can only play in one. In that taunt. case, which loses you the game because that's the execute plus the patron combo. Yeah, but what else are you going to do? Like he's going to. I think that's a mistake as well. Like he, I think you just play the the sludge the sludge budget uh, because it's the druid of the claw is so much better against the patrons because if you know he has the charge plus patron, like the slime doesn't matter because it's just one more patron right, and the right, charge. Right, right, true, true. And the first body of the belcher would uh, die to the death bite, so that's also what matters here. So is that lethal if he plays? I think it is. Plus the patron. But he can even play oh, Gromar, so. Yeah, he plays Gromar and that's lethal anyways. Yeah. But there were so many ways for him to lethal here. So, we have a free O here. Yep. So, oh man, like, Azure Sky should n uh, cannot be happy about this Hunter vs. War game. Like, he came so close, you know, stay.